Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, where our goal is to connect listeners to the great outdoors with hosts Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. I'm host Ben Brandell, owner of Meant to Be Outdoors, instructor of outdoor skills, and passionate about personal growth. I'm host Brian Hoffmeyer, wildlife biologist and avid outdoorsman. Welcome back to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Brian, with my co-host, Ben Brandell, and it is time for another Myth Monday episode. Today, we are going to be talking about dirt versus soil. Are they the same thing, or are they distinctly different? Uh, Most of us use those words kind of interchangeably. We've all heard at least somebody use them interchangeably. But we're going to really kind of dive into to what each of those things are so that we can use those terms correctly. But before we start, let's give thanks. Brian, I am so thankful for men and women that are more wise than you and I Mm. that have been able to uh, reveal to us information that we may have been blind to all our lives. And so... um, just want to thank them for being vulnerable, sharing truth, and helping me to learn who I am. Yeah, I like that. I, I think today I'm really, as we as we sit down to do this and <clears throat> some things that you and I are tossing around and working through, I am thankful for goodness and patience, um, and particularly from the Lord. You know, as I as I go through life, more and more is revealed um, to me about what stinks about me, what what I'm not good at, what's bad, um, and I'm thankful that I've been able to go for years and years with some of those things and and still not have His wrath completely poured out on me, mm. um, and and just to truly have that picture of love, you know, and and I'm so thankful for that goodness because humans to to each other we're so quick to bring wrath or or hate or to just push somebody away uh but he doesn't do that to us he doesn't do that to us he allows us to go through some hurt some pain and some trials um so that he can point us back to him and the goodness and love that he truly has for us so i'm thankful for his goodness and his patience today it's good so with that being said i'm also really thankful for soil well, I'm thankful for dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference? What is the difference between dirt and soil? And the real answer is that soil is this combination of living and dead things that brings life. Mm-hmm. That that brings life. It absorbs gases and, and nasty things from our atmosphere. It makes our world livable. And we have to have it as a, as a part of everyday life because of all the things that come from it that we need. And dirt, really, most people, if you look up the definition, what you're going to find is dirt is misplaced soil. So soil where it's not supposed to be. I like to think and maybe take that just a little step further. I could be wrong in doing this, but it kind of helps me with the way I see it. But I think it is a piece of misplaced soil because dirt is not the full combination of soil components. I've used the talking about the sense of smell for deer i've used the analogy of the cheeseburger how they can smell it in layers so i'm going to use the cheeseburger again here talking about soil so soil is like that it is it has integrity it has form like a cheeseburger Mm -hmm. it has all these different layers and components of it dirt i would say would be if you found a hamburger bun laying on the sidewalk that's dirt it is definitely not a cheeseburger it's definitely not soil it is just a piece that is not where it should be does so that make sense? It does, and we use it interchangeably, like you said, but they're not the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's really the clarity we hope to bring today that, um, yeah, while you're talking, using words like soil, dust, dirt, but we want to bring that truth in that soil is what allows things to grow. Can anything grow in dirt? No, because it's missing multiple pieces to become soil. Correct. And that... I actually found this out many, many years ago. Um, worked with a coworker named Lexi Tennyson, and we were in the educational department teaching all kinds of animal information. Lexi Matthewson now. It is Lexi Matthewson. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sorry to her husband, Chris. See, I was going back to the day when that's when she was. Yes. That was with my story yes. there. So 
she's the one that actually brought it to my attention, you know, by poking like, hey, you're wrong. It isn't mm-hmm. dirt. It's soil because dirt is misplaced soil. And from then on, it's opened my eyes because you, you'll hear a lot of pastors. You'll hear um, um, TV shows. They use the word dirt for where a tree grows right. out of, right? And through what she taught me, that's wrong. That's wrong. It's well, and there, it, there's, it's a piece of it. It's a piece of right? it. Right. It's not a cheeseburger. It's yeah. just a bun just the that bun. you found. Right. Uh-huh. So you can't have a cheeseburger with just a bun. Correct. Right. And that's where we're at today. So when you... When you're outside and you're playing, or we'll say your kids are outside and they're playing and they come in and they have to wash their hands, they wash the dirt off their hands. Right. They don't wash the soil off their hands. Correct. Because they don't have all the components in there. So let's look at what are the components of soil. What makes up soil? What all has to be there? And it really comes down to four things. There are minerals. There are organisms, both living and dead. And there's water. And there's air. And a combination of all those things together makes soil. So when you come inside, you're not washing off water and air and dead worms or living worms off your hand, right? You're just washing off dirt. Dirt. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's hard to say. It's kind of confusing because it still kind of leaves the question, well, what is, what is dirt? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but soil brings life. And soil is alive. There are so many things living in, in, they say that one inch of soil has more things living in it than people that have ever been born. Because there is fungus. That's crazy. And bacteria. Yeah. And viruses. And they're all so small and microscopic, but it is alive. I mean, there is so much going on in soil. But yet there's dead things in it too. And that there's dead things in it too. As a matter of fact, without dead things, you would never have soil because decaying organic matter is where a lot of that life comes from. So decaying animals, decaying plants, all these organic living things, things made of carbon that are breaking down is how soil actually forms. The things that are breaking them down are part of the soil as well, which would be all those organisms that are there. Healthy soil is so important in in so many aspects we as humans we're we're in smart and intellectual culture we are so we've developed herbicides and pesticides and all these things but if you really develop native plants and healthy soil you don't need any of that hmm. you don't if you have native plants and healthy soil then the way god created it works believe it or not what and an example of what i'm talking about is we work so hard to kill pests like spiders, and we have we spray these pesticides, or maybe we have crops and we have pests that are eating at our crops, um, like cutworms or something like that. Spiders, healthy soil will provide the food that the spiders need. Spiders provide food for turkeys and other things like that. So it it really is part of the food web, and we skip. And as humans, we're able to adapt and make things that we don't have to, we can kind of get by without having a complete food web, but healthy soil is the beginning of all of that. And you know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a deer nut. People always want to say, well, how do I, how do I give my deer big antlers? What's the first step? And a lot of people are jaw dropped when I say, you got to make your soil healthy. Right. How does that lead to healthy antlers? But it does. There's really a progression through, again, that whole food web that leads to Deer having big, healthy antlers. It starts in the soil. So is unhealthy soil dirt? Incomplete soil in the wrong place is dirt. <laughs> right. But So if I think I've used this before, but if you found dirt in your belly button, mm-hmm. could you grow a plant? Could you? <laughs> well, does it have minerals, water, <laughs> air, living and dead organisms? So then let me ask it this way. So if you remove one, let's mm-hmm. say you remove water, is your soil... It won't bring life. It won't bring life. Right. Right. So when we talk about dirt, dirt is only one piece of soil. Right. So unhealthy soil could be... Well, think about... A, let's, let's transition from kind of that next level up from the soil to the plants. Okay, good. There are people that grow 
dandelion gardens. Because dandelion is it is an edible food. They make salads out of it. They make dyes, perfumes, and other food out of the flowers, jelly, wines. People grow as a crop dandelions. Now, that's a crop. If you take a dandelion and you put it in your flower bed or maybe in your manicured lawn, it's now a weed because it's not where it's supposed to be. So it w- the dandelion in your flower garden would be the dirt, if that makes sense to you. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's getting clear, but here, here's what I want to I wanna go down this road. So miracle Grow. Mm-hmm. I can go to, to Lowe's and Walmart and buy miracle Grow. And it will help me grow plants. Yeah, I used to rub it on my head. Did it to make work? make my hair grow back. It only grows plants. Okay, so it doesn't grow hair. <laughs> no. Darn it, I was going to try it. So miracle Grow, I thought was all potting soil. When I've heard my mom, when I was a younger kid, say I'm going by potting soil. What I'm realizing is that potting soil is just for pots because a potted plant has to have water and air. And depending on what soil you put in a pot, it may compact so tight that it can't get air in that soil anymore. That's why miracle Grow is great. They've designed it to be lightweight to allow that air and water to get through. Mm-hmm. But you cannot put miracle Grow garden, garden soil in a potted plant because of what I just said. Correct. So they have the two different types. Mm-hmm. So when we are talking about soil, we're not talking, or correct me if I'm wrong here, we're not talking about what is just one inch below the plant? We're talking this could be five feet deep. Right. Right? Because it, it's it's required to have different layers. Right. I mean, when we're talking about dead and living organic matter, minerals, we have to have rocks. You have to have the minerals in there that's going to allow for oxygen to get in, to all those things. Mm-hmm. So when I think soil I, you know, or even dirt, either one, I'm thinking like a really thin layer. But we're talking here, soils, I mean, it, it could be very deep and very, very wide. Yeah, depending on your geographic location, there's different depths of soil everywhere. Here in the Ozarks where we live, our soil is very shallow. It really is very shallow, but there are many places where maybe you've been on a river and seen a big cut bank or seen where there's been some construction, and, and you look at the soil, and it has what I call, I'm going to use the word integrity. It has form. It, it is something, and it is. you can actually look and see the layers. There'll be different depths and different colors You'll see sand, and you'll see clay, and you'll see rock, and you'll see all these different layers. All those layers together is soil. All of that together is soil. And that's kind of when when scientists go and and they're looking at a region, and they're going to say, well, what kind of soil is here? They're going to take a big swath. They're going to cut down, and they're going to look at all those layers and see what kind of different elements are there, minerals, clay, rock, all those things to define the the kind of soil that is in that geographic region. What do we have? So, interesting fact, every state in the United States actually has a state soil, just like every state has a state tree or flower or bird. And I did not know this. This just came from our research here and and, and diving into soil a little bit further. But we live in Missouri, so Missouri's state soil is called Menfro, M-E-N-F-R-O, Menfro Soil. Um, and it is classified by being rich and decaying plant matter, and it has a lot of clay that has washed down from the Missouri and Mississippi rivers. And that's not to say that that's the only soil that we have in our state, but it is the most predominant and most well-known in our state. So they've kind of said that is our state soil, Menfro. And you can you can go online and you can look that up. It's actually soils for the number four teachers.org, soilsforteachers.org, and you can look up whatever state you're in and see your state soil if uh, you're a nerd like me and care to know that. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. I hadn't known that or heard that either. Um, while talking about all this, separating soil from dirt. So where you live, you actually have some houses um, under construction. And, and as we drive to the office every day, I, I see these houses. And I see these big piles of, I would have called them dirt in the mm-hmm. past. But within the last uh, three months of those piles being there, now there's, they're covered in grass. Mm-hmm. So I can identify that that is soil that's, right. that's mounted up there. But Because the, it brought life. Because it brought life, mm-hmm. right. So I've also seen then on the roads, 
these trucks that are doing the, doing the construction, as they leave, they're actually taking that same soil and they're leaving it all over the road. And some of it was clay, right? Because mm-hmm. you can just see those colors. Well, nothing has grown on that road and that clay is still there. Because it is. So it's it's dirt. It's dirt. It's dirt. So if you can look out and you see an, an area that appears to be soil, but there's no life growing from it, we could call that dirt. Mm-hmm. If it's got life growing from it, then we can understand that it's soil. But it could be unhealthy soil. Could it be? If something is growing from it, can it still be unhealthy? Well, un- unho- unhealthy soil can still grow plants, can still grow life. But right. the quality of those plants and the types of plants that are there is going to be very limited. And be impacted. Correct. Okay. It changes for sure. That's good. <clears throat> now, you and I talk a lot about the importance of water. We've had uh, Brendan Freeman, a, a water engineer, on in the past talking about our water systems and how we protect them. And I think we've even said, you know, without water, we'd have no life. And we're making that same statement here today about soil. And we weren't leaving out soil when we said that. I think it just, God has made such a beautiful system here on earth that we we have to have all these things for life. And you remove one of these core things, we don't have life. We've mentioned that soil has water in it, but soil is so, so important for the quality of our water because soil absorbs our water, preventing runoff, erosion, picking up pollution. It's going to hold our water for us. It's going to release that water for us when we need it, release it to plants when they need it. It actually alters the water, can change it, filter it, purify it, clean it as it goes through all these systems, adding and removing nutrients as it needs to be. I don't want to imagine what our water would be like without soil. I kind of wonder, it's just speculation, I kind of wonder if we would even have water without soil. Yeah, that's great. I I can only turn back to creation account, mm-hmm. and in the creation account, water Covered the was the very first. first thing. Right. Yeah, you had water before before the, the creation of everything else. But what um, was under it? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't you know, know. More water. Yeah, more, more just water. water on water on water on water. But, you know, with with all that, you know, we get into hydroponics, which isn't this talk today, but um, people can grow with having the some of the right elements inside <laughs> that water. You know, I question how healthy that is, but mm-hmm. that's for another time. Um, but for me... You know, the separation of, of dirt and soil is only important just because they are different and we do use them interchangeably. Right. And that's helped me even in, in my walk just daily of am I, what am I saying? How am I saying it? And is it even truth? Right. right? And so that's why we just, I, personally, I wanted to share this one with you. Uh, you know, like I said, Lexi's the one that, that actually opened my eyes to this concept because all my life I've always called it dirt. I haven't thought humans were made from dirt. Find out we were, we're made from the dust. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and shall dust we shall return. And dust we shall return. Um, but thinking about soil and its and its layers, it it really blows my mind that, well, I've learned that we have topsoil, you have subsoil, you have <clears throat> all these layers and levels. And, and I know we have actually even talked about this before about making campfires and the impacts that it has. And you and I teach this out on backpacking trips. And I kind of thought, well, you know, who who kind of cares? But it's something that's probably important right. to talk about. But about the leave no trace principles. Yeah, I want to yeah. leave no trace. Uh, leave no trace principles is min- minimize campfire impacts. And <clears throat> you know, it is gross to look at when whenever you go out camping and you see all these these fire rings and all this stuff people made. But but um, I have been told that you know, fire in a in a state like that where it's in one spot, you're making this hot coal base that it kills everything below it. It kills the life. And so it's really this podcast this is waking me up and, and helping me understand that what we're doing is you're literally taking once soil and you're turning it into dirt because nothing can grow. It kills out, whether it be the living, it dries up all the water, it zaps all mm-hmm. the air. Mm-hmm. You're literally trans, you're, you're changing soil over to dirt. Now, fires aren't bad across like you're talking about. I was going to say, I just wanted to clarify yeah. that... A, a fire in one central location like you're talking about, we'll say you took rocks and made a ring mm-hmm. with this intense heat for a long sustained amount of time is different than a prescribed fire Correct. moving over an area that's restoring a native seed bed. Right. Much well, and that's why you want to minimize your campfire impacts because pick one spot and use it, right? Mm-hmm. Great. If you want one, do it. But when you go, when you come up to an area, use that same one. Don't go make a new one because you are making more and more impacts to the land. 
you know, you are changing that soil. And if, if you have nothing growing there, that impacts a lot. So soil is important. Right. We need to take care of it. And soil, there are scientists, they're soil scientists. I mean, their life has dedicated, their work, I should say, is, is dedicated to studying soil and learning more about it and helping build healthy soil in areas. So this is something that if we were really to dive down this rabbit hole, we could talk for at least a full hour, if not multiple episodes about soil. So I want to leave with one more point before we wrap it up. And that is to say that soil is considered a renewable resource. However, it is a limited renewable resource because it is constantly forming. That makes it renewable, but it forms so slow. The process is so, so slow. It takes, depending on the climate you're in, several hundred years for one inch of soil to farm through natural processes of things dying and decaying and microorganisms and all those things working on that. Um, You know, in cold, dry climates, that's going to be the slowest. They say over a thousand years to form one inch of soil and your more warm, wet climates, you know, two to 400 years to form one inch of soil. We as humans can do things to kind of manipulate that, but we really can't just speed it up. We can't speed it up to a year. We can't do that. However, dirt you could go outside today and form dirt you just go out there and and get something that's messy right and and then you have dirt so my point is dirt's a super super simple one little isolated thing soil is very complex it's natural it's forming it's changing and it takes a long time to get it Mm -hmm. does that make sense to you it does okay i I think that's probably enough about soil before we, again, dive down this rabbit hole and have to do several episodes about what soil truly is and how to make good soil and all the different kinds. Um, There's even soil orders I learned today, not just different soil types or soil orders. So I hope this helps you understand dirt and soil. We have used this wrong many, many times in our lives. We've heard many other people use it wrong as well. Um, You're not necessarily wrong if you call soil dirt, but there is more information to be shared there. So I hope that this podcast has been enlightening to you. If you guys like what we're doing with the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, we are looking for people to join us as patrons. We have a Patreon account. Uh, Any of our link trees on our social media accounts, you can click on that and one of the options will be to go to Patreon. You know, if you even become one of the $25 members, we'll even send you one of our Meant to Be Outdoors hats. So if you're really a fan of the podcast and want to rep one of our hats for us, become that uh, that top class on the membership there and we'll ship one of our hats to you. We would greatly appreciate your support. Whatever platform you're listening on, hit the automatic download and subscribe button and definitely leave us a review. We, we want to hear how we're doing. It helps other people know about the podcast and learn about it as well. It helps us move up those ranking charts so more people can find us. We are so thankful that you took your time to listen to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast today. We hope that between now and the next episode, you find time to get outdoors. Thank you for listening to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, hosted by Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. Please help us by subscribing. Also, follow along on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.